This is my home theatre, where I normally spend most of my free time with my family and sometimes all to myself to rewind, watch some of my favourite movies, support my fellow content creators and occasionally spend a couple of hours a week playing video games. If you have been following me, you may know for the last year or so, I've been slowly upgrading my equipment and some decor work when I can and when financially it's the right time for me. I've been blessed with a great community that's been supporting my journey and with your help I've managed to fund some of the equipment and the time I've spent on this room. In this video I'm going to show you guys a glimpse of my day in my life followed by a quick tour of my home theatre room. Hi everyone, my name is Sarkas and welcome to my channel. I'm a massive home theatre and general tech enthusiast that spends way too much money on tech and have many hobbies such as fixing cars, love anything DIY, a big fan of landscaping and a major sucker for nature and plants. Like everyone, I do way too much during the day and not enough sleep but without my morning coffee, I am a walking zombie. I try to squeeze in a workout or two daily to stay active but love take away way too much and like to occasionally visit my local home theatre shop for advice and of course support their business. Fixing cars is my hobby but also my 10 hour day work which is running an automotive business but when I get home quality time with my family is very important and even though cooking isn't my expertise I still like to try and prep something for my family. When the kids are asleep, that's when my night starts as I like to sit down, collect all my thoughts and continue to work creating new content, editing, researching about latest tech and slowly work my way up to my home theatre room to record a video or switch off and relax. Let me show you guys around. Well, this room was built about two years ago and is completely sealed and soundproofed with Earthwool 2.7 insulation inside of the walls, ceiling, flooring, and the risers with a solid core door for entrance, but still get a lot of vibration because of these phenomenal Crix Volcanics subwoofers that rock this house. Unfortunately, this room was built on the second floor of the house because of renovations and at the time I did not take any videos of the build process, but this 6.5 by 3.5 meter wide space has a 3 meter ceiling with a drop down bulkhead around the room creating a pretty awesome feature with the Govi LED strip lights and fiber optic starlights that changes the entire vibe when you enter the room. I personally don't like them being on when watching a movie but for a small price this is one feature you want to have in your room when chilling out. The front and rear risers are about 40 centimeters in total height that's dressed with a plush grey pet proof carpet that feels nice on the feet. As you can see around the room I've added 8 1.8 by 0.6 meter absorption panels for extra acoustic treatment that's made a significant difference reducing the reverberation and echo in this space. I built them myself which are really easy to do. All you need is premium dress pine timber for framework to be light in weight, insulation and the material of choice staple to hold it in place. The lighting and voice automation in the room is controlled with the Logitech Harmony Elite Universal Remote and the Google Mini, which do a fantastic job dimming the down lights and step lights for me as you enter the room, turn on the lights when I'm being creative with testing of equipment, turn off the lights when a movie is being played and of course, have full control of my equipment. This beautiful screen is the Elite 125 inch acoustically transparent 2.35 to 1 Cinemascope screen which is just awesome. The advantage of having a wide screen is the storage underneath which allowed me to place and tuck in my AV rack visually hidden away. Up above between my first and second row seating is the playmaker of the room, the Epson EH-TW8300 or also known as 5040UB HDR projector that truly has blown me away with its reliability, eye popping bright colors and ultra blacks for a full immersive light screen experience. 
And now, of course, I'm going to show you guys what's behind the screen. Take a look at these Crix Megaphonics flat on wall speakers. How good do they look? I've had these for several months now, upgraded from the Klipsch floor standing speakers. They are perfect for those looking for space saving solutions, delivering impact and dynamics you need for a real home cinema experience without the need for expensive AV equipment. My surround and rear channels unfortunately haven't been upgraded just yet, but these reference series Klipsch R5650W2 in-wall speakers are amazing for anyone that's looking for that crystal clear sound, another space saving solution that's out of the way when walking around the room. The copper woofer has looks for days and the best part is they're affordable. I just love how this room sounds and to top it off, the four speakers up above has changed my whole experience in gaming as well as watching movies that supports Dolby Atmos. Front two are the RSL C34E which are slightly bigger in size and the back two are the Klipsch CDT 3650C2 in-wall speakers that are placed about two feet in front of my seating but will be upgraded very soon to match my quick setup so stay tuned for exciting times ahead. This entire setup is being powered by one of the biggest reliable brands, the Denon 4400 H-Series 9.2 channel 4K receiver with the T7 and T8 AC Infinitive fans cooling area that's paired with the 5-channel Marantz WM7055 amplifier providing extra power for this room's 7.2.4 surround sound setup. I recently added the Marantz amplifier and is currently hooked up to my LCR speakers while the receiver handles the rest. Why I chose these two brands? Well, because of price range and of course the reliability factor. In my spare time, I do like to play games to keep the mind sharp and currently loving the long nights with the PlayStation 5. It truly is an amazing next-gen machine. This one is the disc edition as I love collecting physical discs but for watching movies, I use the Sony UBPX 800 series 4K player. The seating in this room was an easy choice. I love how low line the front row lounge is, not to mention how spacious. To one side, the seat also acts as a storage area, which I think is clever. The listening height angle is pretty decent and watching a movie three meters away on that 125 inch screen is just perfect. As for the second row back seating due to space, I decided to have three black electric reclining seats with a seat tray in between, which is pretty handy and a USB charger that's a must have next to its up down controller. The seats are approximately a feet away from the back wall and five and a half meters away from the screen, leaving plenty of foot space to walk around the room. I've tried to keep the room minimal, modern and inviting. The red pillars play a little nice touch with the black and red theme. The black curtains complementing the screen. The red velvet rope stand with a 500 disc storage cabinet complementing the gold class vibe. On the back wall are some posters on my favorite movies in timber frames, a temporarily candy bar or two on the side corners of the room and three metal signs on top of the entrance door of what this room features. The last couple of years has been a massive learning curve for me and looking back now, there are definitely a few things I would do a little different, such as remove the HVAC vent that's at the front of the room so the sound doesn't travel through the house. And secondly, to be honest, I'm not a massive fan of the home theater being on the second floor of the house because of its inconveniency and disadvantage of not being able to decouple from the rest of the house. At the time, my goal was to create a fun space that's cozy and modern that my family and I will enjoy until our next chapter. That being said, I am very sad to say we have sold our home and that means everything has to be stripped out which is going to look terrible. And if you guys think that will be a cool video to see, let me know. I've also left links of some of the DIY projects I've done for this room which can be helpful to some of you guys. 
But the future of HStudio 3.0 Studio is looking bigger and better. And if you'd like to see more content as such, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you find anything useful, let me know in the comment section below or ask me a question and I'll do my best to answer them. If you're considering some of these items for yourself, I'll put the links down below, so check it out. A big shout out to all you guys that's in nice and early on the comment section. Thank you for watching, but it's way past my bedtime and I think it's time to reset the soul.